Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I'm Georgines, I'm the CEO of Yasis Health. Uh, we are from Brazil, <clears throat> but we're, what we are doing, uh, not intended to be only in Brazil. Uh, we are building a healthcare community. The idea is to bring everybody to help uh, in order to, to get help for everyone, not only the, the privileged one, but everybody in the whole world. So what we are talking today uh, is about using blockchain uh, on building a sustainable healthcare community. Uh, we have a, uh, did a lot of job <coughs> in, in Brazil on the last couple of, of years. Uh, I was in Hyperledger Global Forum in 2020, before pandemics. So since that, the, the, all the things changed a lot for everybody, but for us in Brazil too, uh, in order to, to use blockchain as a technology uh, to provide interoperability for everybody and uh, have the health digital wallet for the patients. Uh, when we talk about healthcare, we have a lot of challenges, not only in Brazil, but in the whole world. Uh, we have more than 1.4 billion people that will be over 60 in 2030. And uh, the costs for the healthcare uh, will be increasing dramatically. So when we go to the hospital, the increase in, in average cost uh, over 60 is 131%. And uh, the cost is very big with people aging. <clears throat> and with this, we have a lot of disparities. Uh, the low-income countries, they spend an average $34 per capita a year. In high-income countries, for example, health spending is an average on $3,313 per capita for a year. So this is a very big disparity, a very big, big gap. And the actual model is not sustainable at the moment. Uh, we've seen this with the pandemic that killed uh, more than six, uh, than six million people around the world. And uh, all of this model uh, is spending a lot of uh, waste in the, in the healthcare ecosystem. In the world, the annual wage for spending is around $3.5 trillion a year. This, if you, we had 10% uh, of this spending on healthcare, we could uh, afford the, the healthcare for more than 1 billion people with the same pattern as the high income countries. Uh, and so we get a question for us. In Brazil, uh, this, this question is very big because the, the healthcare ecosystem there uh, have a lot of disparities. And uh, all of this uh, scenario that we have in Brazil, uh, it's not sustainable. But we think that the whole world uh, will have this, this exactly same scenario and how to give access, reduce costs, and enhance the, the quality of life on, this, on this, all of this. So we are, we are positioned as initiators of a sustainable healthcare ecosystem that is focused on the continuity of patient care and lifelong wellness. For this, we've, we believe that we need to make the citizens the CEO of his own, own health to facilitate the exchange of information between the health providers, between interoperability, that is when it comes the blockchain, uh, reduce this waste and focus on prevention and continuity of care. Because on the, on the end of the day, what we need is to enhance the quality of life of people. So we are focused on three points. Uh, the first point is the people and community, and this patient must be uh, the agent of his own health care. The healthcare industry needs to focus on the optimization and cost reduction and eliminating intermediaries and waste. And the healthcare professionals need to be empowered and uh, to have the, all the information they need 
to uh, get uh, new treatments, uh, prevention of medicine, and so on. So what we've done, we have a, done a, a study, a future study uh, scenario uh, based on the, on the future con and on three waves of innovation that we uh, deliver a lot of technologies that should be implemented in order to have all of these uh, points of longevity, longevity, empowerment, and healthcare cost savings. And the blockchain is on the core. We need to uh, initiate with the blockchain in order to have all the ecosystem uh, being fed by a lot of other technologies that exist. So uh, what we are doing is, and uh, our, our purpose, is to improve people's health by providing more, more quality uh, of life, well-being, anywhere on a path to on longevity. And for this, we need to be focused on a purpose-driven strategy. So we are focused on purpose. Uh, we are agnostic, so the blockchain comes on this because uh, the healthcare silos, they all of them have their own interests. So the blockchain comes to be this infrastructure in order to be uh, the, the, the exchange of information for all of these players. And uh, the, these need to redesign a healthcare structure. So, uh, with this, we have to focus on the primary care, on the primary care, and uh, empowering the citizens and reduce the health costs. For this, we have developed a project in Brazil that I'm going to show to you. Uh, this project, uh, we had a, a, a structure that we built. Uh, it's a digital. Uh, structure on the on the healthcare, so we have a, a, a digital healthcare center that combines the better from the technology and from the care for the patients. So we have this health health digital center. Uh, this one is on a poor part of Belo Horizonte, Brazil, and uh, we have been to them all the information, the healthcare ass assessments all the, the, the triage that we need to get from the patients, uh, all the signs from the patient, uh, the, the healthcare exam uh, with a, a nurse, and then we bring them on this capsule, the telemedicine. So we have uh, this capsule that uh, deliver doctors to uh, areas that don't have enough doctors to, to assist them. So uh, this capsule was uh, built for mental health, but we have a, a surprise, a big surprise, to use it on uh, the telemedicine too. So this, this project we done on the, on the January, February uh, in, in Belo Horizonte. And this is only the initiator of the, the structure from the digital uh, healthcare ecosystem. So, uh, one of the biggest challenges that we have is to have the digital twins uh, representing the health data for our lives in one place. Uh, for this, we have used blockchain on a structure of transversal interoperability uh, on the a lot of players from Brazil. And just to show to you, this is a little bit of the healthcare ecosystem in Brazil. We have private care, we have public healthcare. Uh, the public healthcare in Brazil uh, is inspired on the NHS from Britain. Um, but we, we have uh, clinics, uh, hospitals that are public. We have the same on, on health insurance plans and we have the same on private plans. So we have a, an ecosystem that is very, very big. And uh, what we have done to Ministry of Health is the National Healthcare Data Network. Uh, this network, we, we get, get it on production on 2020, on May 2020. I presented this on the Hepalegia Global Forum in Phoenix on March and then 
on my, uh, we, as we get the pandemic, they gun on production uh, and we have all of, all of this structure connecting with blockchain, getting trust, uh, distributed uh, placement and uh, uh, all of this trackable. So what we've got, we got this, uh, a lot of blockchain nodes from the city, from the hospitals, from the clinics, from the labs, from the pharmacies, from the hospitals and, uh, and connected with the national uh, health data network. All of this providing the timeline for the patient. So with this, we have our health digital wallet uh, with all the information that comes from any of the nodes from the blockchain. So we have structures uh, they are private, for example, for health insurance plans, they have the private blockchain structure. And this is connected with a big structure uh, that is based on the uh, health digital wallet from the patient. This health digital wallet uh, is enabled with health, uh, Hyperledger Indy and all the structure uh, on the blockchain, the timeline is, is based on Hyperledger Fabric. So what we've done, we have all of this information from uh, any of the, the data from the patient that is built on blockchain. And then we connect all of this uh, and the, the smart contract is guaranteed uh, by, by the GDPR stuff, uh, all the, the private stuff on, on, the, on the data from the patient. So what we have on the end of the day is a timeline for the patient with all of the information from hospitals, from clinics, from laboratories, independent where I've been. I've been on a hospital here in Dublin, and then when I go to London, for example, all the, this data is stored on my health digital wallet, and all of these nodes, they connect with, with each other in blockchain. And our main goals for this is to break the sick care logic. Uh, this timeline, is to empower the healthcare professionals, empower the patient uh, to build lifelong wellness, to construct a, pa a path to longevity in order that we have all the data stored on, the, on a timeline and delivered it to the patients. He can send it to the doctors, he, he can deliver it to the nurse that he is in care with the, their treatments. So it's better for him uh, to, to get a, a path to longevity for him. So for this, we're going to break on this step, this step. The first, to break the sick care logic, we have to have all the personal health records of the patient in one place. For this, this is our health digital wallet. All of the information from the patient are in the same place. Uh, and the information that are here are information that came from the, the players, from the healthcare ecosystem, and information, for example, from the watch, information from devices, from wearables, uh, all in one point. And all of these protected with GDPR on, on the smart contract. So we have a protected health digital wallet uh, that uh, delivered to the, to the doctor, for example, uh, when the patient adds it, when the, the patient has all the control of his data and he, he can do whatever he wants with this data. Just to mention here a photo from March 4, 2020, and uh, what we have done from, since then from, from now, we have more than 1.5 billion transactions that we have done on the National Health Data Network, uh, on high fiber fabric, uh, the healthcare timeline, uh, 2,000 uh, transactions per second on, the, on, the, on this environment. We are now enabled to connect with the centralized identity on ED. Uh, the main network and sub-networks can be done. So we have private networks, we have connected with this uh, main networks that have this timeline. And we have interoperability on public and private sector. This is a case that we uh, just launched it on the last month. Uh, with public hospitals, private hospitals, philanthropic hospitals, clinical and laboratories, all of this timeline on the same place and distributed on blockchain. 
So what we believe is that we need to get a healthcare Instagram, your entire timeline in one place, and get all this portability, uh, this breaking the silos, federalization of the distributed data, blockchain security, and GDPR, uh, built it on design. And all of this information from the timeline, they need to go to the right hands. The right hands, uh, when we put it on the healthcare professionals, what we have is a continual analysis. We have now uh, treatment analysis, quite a fly, quality of light analysis, a healthcare avatar that empowers the healthcare professional in order to uh, get all this care done. And uh, this is what we call small, smart healthcare, with all this avatar on the same place, on the distributed timeline, and a smart EMR with RPA interoperability, clinical decisions, uh, prognosis, all of this on the same place in order to empower the professionals and, and to reduce the wasteful spend. When we use all of this information, we can reduce all of the ways of the 3.5 trillion that I mentioned before on the, on, the, on the initial of the presentation. And this could be delivered to the hospital with care management. Uh, all of this could be delivered to a DRG analysis uh, and empower uh, internet hospitals, for example, with this technology. And have a continuity of care for the patient too, uh, with the concept of blended healthcare. And, and connected with Aishon, with outcome, uh, outcomes, measurements, and personalized treatment plans. All of this uh, enables us to think about lifelong wellness, uh, a really value-based healthcare that can deliver the monitor from the patients and connect it with the patient inside his treatment. So. Uh, the, the information can now flow between the, uh, the treatment that the patient is having, for example, with a cancer, uh, with a, uh, something that he is passing through the, his life, some chronic disease, and then uh, all the healthcare professionals can monitor this and deliver uh, actions in real time. And this is what we call value-based healthcare, transforming the fee-for-service from a patient-centric approach in real, connecting the remote monitoring for the patients and uh, with the, the timeline and getting all of this for the healthcare professionals. All of this uh, delivers us a path to longevity that we can deliver personalized medicine and maybe meta-medicine, uh, gamified with met, uh, medicine, for example, on the on a metaverse. And then, then we can reach the, the, the children with the timeline connected to your avatar. So we can deliver this connection between the, the healthcare, for example, for mental healthcare for, from patients, uh, that are on these metaverses. And with all of this, we created a concept that is life better to earn. We have a lot of to earns uh, that are built on the Web3. Uh, now we have built a so bound token that is an NFT, uh, but it's bounded with my healthcare timeline that can deliver to me new forms of care, personalized tips, uh, autonomy of per patient information, new engagement models for, for example, pharmaceutical industry, for the, the healthcare uh, structure itself, for the hospitals, for the insurances, and all of these are structured on the soulbound token. And this soulbound token is from the patient to the patient, and the patient decides what he does with it. With this, we are building a community with new and sustainable financial models on healthcare. Uh, and this is Kali. I'm going to show you just a brief what we are planning to do.
Are we ready to the future of healthcare? The world population is aging. Inequality is a problem worldwide. And waste in healthcare is unsustainable. It is necessary to challenge the status quo. Change the sick care model. Deliver health to all who need it. Anywhere. The patient must be the CEO of his own health. Have his health digital wallet. Get engaged in care. Throughout his life. We are a sustainable healthcare ecosystem. Eliminating intermediaries. Reducing waste. And giving it back. To fund healthcare. In a sustainable way. We are insurgents. Initiators. But only inducers. We need everyone. Healthcare professionals. Pharmaceutical industry. Hospitals. Health insurance. And mostly. You. We. Are Kali. The world's first decentralized sustainable health community. Let's change the world's health together. Join us. So what we are doing in Cali is getting all the platform for the patient to get what he wants to do with his data and connected this on the web free model. So uh, with this marketplace, the patient can uh, deliver anonymous data to the pharmaceutical industry, but he receives the tokens. Not only the hospitals, not only the, the structure, uh, we are delivering power to the patient to do whatever he wants with his data. So he gets all the information and get the, the offer for him and he can do whatever he wants. But not, not only this, uh, the sustainable healthcare ecosystem that is what we bring us to here now uh, is a Decentralized Autonomous Organization, it's a DAO, uh, that is funding a treasure to uh, deliver new healthcare financing models worldwide. So uh, what we have, we, we have uh, funding from a lot of uh, sources, for example, from donations, for example, from uh, the, the selling of the tokens, uh, with the community, uh, with the, the enhanced of the, the healthcare ecosystem that we have built, for example, in blockchain, we deliver this to the DAO, and the DAO reinvest this on sustainable healthcare projects. So what we are doing is a DeFi platform that connects with the blockchain private uh, structure and the permission that structure and we, all of these, we have tokens that can exchange all the information. So the, the data from the patient is stored on the, on the private structure and connected with the health digital wallet from the patient. But what the patient uh, uh, monetize is his view of the soul bound token, for example. Uh, and for this, we are building a refi funding for SDG healthcare projects, a gamified care based on, on data, new pharmaceutical R&D based distributed data, so we can deliver for pharmaceutical industries, for, for example, uh, new bottles in order to buy all this data. This data can be used in new clinical trials, and these clinical trials could be transformed in an NFT and part of the, a fraction of the NFT can be delivered to the patient as a payment, for example, or can deliver it, it in tokens, for example. And, and with all of this, we are creating a new sustainable investment model and, and a personalized marketplace based on the Web3 model. And just to show you it in real, we are showing you now a project that we have done in Blue Horizonte. On a, on a community on there. And uh, this is a little bit of what we can do. Belo Horizonte, Brazil. Largest urban occupation in Latin America. 
from the third largest city in Brazil. In 2022, they still did not have electricity or access to quality health care. And no one to look out for them. Forgotten. We believe in a warm welcome. In real health care. In the right to dignity. A human look is needed. Tender. And sustainability. We are Kali. Technology delivering purpose. Combining access to health. Care for the forgotten. Awakening a sense of community. So what we are doing is a humanitarian digital clinical healthcare center. Uh, that one that we showed to you, uh, delivered to who needs and delivering primary attention services in remote and difficult areas. We are building this project now in Xingu, on Amazonas, for the, for the Indians, and uh, delivering to them microcredit for healthcare in a bank that is called 72 Bank, and to follow up health conditions, physical exam, medication, and get a new model of alternative funding ecosystem for healthcare based on community-based fundraising, based on purpose-based fundraising. And just to explain to you what's purpose-based fundraising, uh, the traditional fundraising is based on exponential expectations that funds, and then when the beautiful day, they got an IPO, and then the, uh, the things go ahead, and we have a long tail performance, probably on an S-curve. Nothing Chris, uh, uh, have a uh, uh, exponential forever. So uh, what we are having today is inflated valuations or super inflated valuations based on a Ponzi scheme. Some companies, they go on an S curve, but some companies, they uh, have a, a, a big growth, but they're not ESG. What we are doing is a purpose-based fundraiser with investment focus on the SDG projects. Uh, these projects uh, are based on new valuations, on new metrics. For example, social impact, life savings, quality of life, uh, life lifespan increase. And uh, all of this uh, is based on any of these metrics uh, to reduced waste, token value, reduced cost, treatment on optimization, fee on transaction. But all of this uh, is monitored based, based on ecological ceiling and can create new projects based, based on a sustainable ecosystem. So we don't only grow from, on a vertical side. We can grow on a, on a horizontal side with new initiatives being invested, uh, which can be uh, spin-offs, even in other SDGs. So uh, we have an, a project now that is sustainable healthcare ecosystem finance based on cleaner energy. So we are building uh, farms of solar energy. This solar energy is sold in the market and part of this, of this profit reverse to healthcare. So with this money, we can, for example, have humanitarian DCHs on other uh, places. So it's the sun financing healthcare. This could be a new, a new model for, for, the, for the planet uh, and based on new forms of uh, sustainability structure. And all of this is governance by the DAO. And uh, here's a little bit about our timeline. We are on testnet at the moment uh, with the SBT, the DAOs, uh, but we have uh, already some projects. But we, what we are uh, aiming is the longevity scale scheme. Uh, focus on health maintenance, on prognosis, on prevention, on active patient, on doctor as manager. And we know that we can do it by ourselves. So here is an invite for everybody that wants to join us 
uh, we are open to this. Uh, I'm going to open here for questions. Thank you very much for everybody being here. The mic's here if anybody has questions. Here you go. Thank you. Um, thank you for the information. Um, I have some uh, general questions, if it's okay. Uh -huh. um, so the first one is, um, how did you convince um, hospitals or healthcare providers to join you? Because sometimes they don't even know that they have a problem. Uh -huh. And the second one is, um, what can you do in case that um, the patient or the end user lost their uh, keys to the wallet or their information. Um, yeah, I had another one, one second. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, uh, how do you overcome legal problems? Like, um, did you have in Brazil some legal issues if you wanted to implement those technology? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's start with the first question. It's an excellent question because it's uh, difficult in every country, I think, uh, to break the silos is one of the biggest problems here for everybody. They don't want to deliver their data. Uh, what we are doing uh, is a step-by-step -step strategy. So with some uh, people, they have already the conscience about uh, this is better for everybody. So when we have some projects, for example, in Belo Horizonte, in Porto Alegre, uh, in Sao Paulo, some of them, they are ready uh, with the, the, the right uh, thinking about this, but there are a lot that don't. So uh, in Brazil, we have the, the GDPR law there, uh, it's just like uh, here in Europe. And uh, what we are doing then is enforcing them to deliver the data to the patient, not for me, to the patient. I'm, I'm now uh, representing the patient, asking him to deliver it to me. So uh, this is a new model that we, uh, we don't want the data for ourselves. Uh, and we don't want to open the data for ourselves. So we have all the privates respected and uh, with this, they are enforced to deliver to the patient. They're not delivering to me. Uh, and this is a uh, break through the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the logic. Uh, it's not easy, but uh, we are doing this about two years and uh, uh, we, what, we, with the, the, the effort that we've done with Ministry of Health, it helped us to, to have all of the, this enforcement uh, going on, 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 the, on the other players. But I think it could be done uh, in a dif different ways depending on, the, on the, the country that it can do. Of course, the law, uh, uh, it helps. It helps a lot. Uh, but uh, uh, I think this is a, a consciousness that can be done. And uh, when we anchor this on SDG and anchor this on the purpose, not on, on the, the profit, we don't, want, we don't want the profit. We want to help people to get their information and deliver it uh, to, to, to have empowerment for them. So with this mo movement, I think it's more legitimate that we, we can convince them with, in a better way. Um, thank you. Um, so you must have some advisors. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you for the information. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for the presentation. It was really rich in terms of new information. I have a following question. You said that it's very important to have an ecosystem 
because you as an individual company you cannot change the world for better so the question is do you feel like you have a responsibility to educate the participants in your ecosystem in relation to uh, blockchain or uh, if you feel this responsibility if yes if you do that and how mm -hmm. and if you don't feel like that whose do you think it's this responsibility is mm -hmm. who's responsible for that okay yeah. uh, absolutely i think we need to educate the the patients uh, but we need to maybe do something like a user experience for them they not uh, know what's blockchain at all uh, and maybe they will not want to know what's blockchain so <laughs> what we need to to deliver to them is information that they can are, they are protected that they can do whatever they want the, and do it on a on a on an easy way this is very difficult to do uh, we think it needs to be done and, and, and we are part of it now in, in teaching them how this technology, all of this stuff, uh, that is why I just showed to you think, some things that, is not, that is not technology. For example, when you put the patient on the front of a, of a doctor, there is technology involved with that, but the patient don't know if it's blockchain on the on the on the infrastructure or not if uh, they want to know if they are protected or not and for this we need to teach them that we are using the best technology that we have in the moment to have all of this that they want and, uh, and I think this would be a step-by-step strategy too and if we talk more about government um, I don't know hospitals you know, these institutions. Uh -huh. Do you have a special team who reaches out to them, who talk because you need their like help and participation in this ecosystem as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, we have a lot of partners on our structure uh, in order to talk with hospitals, for example. Uh, so, for example, uh, we have uh, some health insurance companies that want to do all of the comp continuity of care for the patients. They get a lot of money with this. They can uh, have a, a lot of reduced waste. So we use them as the, the speakers with the, the, the hospitals as they have the contracts. They have the, the, the effort to, to get the data in order to treat the patients. The patients. So this, with these uh, this partners, with these players that we have on the ecosystem, they help us to encourage and to enforce all, all, all the other players that are not uh, very... <laughs> uh... yeah, thank you, it's clear. And you were right uh, by showing the patient, us in this case, uh, this video presentation, you know, with the demo of the app. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes me uh, want to have this app as well. <laughs> oh, okay. Great, we, yeah. can do, we can do this. <laughs> thank you. Thank Anyone you. else? Any more questions? Uh -huh. Just to make sure to double check, please. So when you want to start a project that's related to healthcare and you are using like uh, um, cutting edge, like emerging technology, blockchain. Uh -huh. So what is like the first, of course that it depends like where you want to operate and, but do you think like the first step would be to validate like the legal issues or to try to get, I mean, to go to talk to customers, like what is the first, the first step, step. To, to start? Uh -huh. uh, in Brazil, we started with the, the problem itself, uh, how to solve the problem itself. And then the Lego issues come, came uh, in, uh, in the, those moments that it should be done. So uh, the, the first part of the legal issue that we have to address was the GDPR. This is the, the core of the system. So this part, it came on the, on the very first moment, but the other legal structure, they came on the, 
of the rest of the project. Thank you. He, he, uh, here. Um, first, thanks, thanks again for the presentation. And um, I, unfortunately, I lost the first five to ten minutes, but I, I was amazed by the um, amount of, let's say, different uh, aspects that you've been uh, focusing on, both uh, within, uh, let's say, within Kali Health. And especially, I was interested in understanding if there might be some issues in balancing, for example, the um, energy sides of the organization in understanding uh, to what extent the profits made from one side of the organization might be um, transferred to another side of the organization if there are some tensions, some issues, and or in general, how do you deal with it? Okay. Uh, of course, there are some interests that we have. Uh, we have uh, Yasis that is our technological side uh, that builds the health digital wallet, that builds the EMR system, that builds the, the blockchain from the cooperative side. And we have Kali that has the, the effort to deliver purpose itself to the, to, the, 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 the one who needed. And uh, there, there is uh, the, the, the worry about building it on a DAO. Mm -hmm. That is because uh, it's not ours structure. It's a structure that we want to deliver to the world. So that is the main, the main structure that building it in a, DAO, in a DAO is that, that it can be controlled and governed by not only us, but by everybody that wants to be on the ecosystem. Uh, so there is uh, on the main structure in the both of the companies, there is one thing that don't, does not change. We are purpose-based. So what we believe and what we do is to deliver purpose. The profit came after. Uh, the purpose came before. So uh, this is the main structure that we built. So with this, of course, there is a lot of money in the industry that is uh, waste and can be reverted uh, in order to have profit for Yasis, to have profit to the DAO. But when we deliver this to the DAO, for example, we are delivering to finance new projects, new healthcare projects, in order to give a legacy to the humanity. This is uh, the main division between the two companies and how we, we deliver the, uh, the, the, the results of them. And do you have any threshold uh, related to, I don't know, the uh, amount of, for example, profits that might be transferred from the, the energy side to the to deliver health services, for example? Yes, yes. Uh, for example, uh, there is some project, uh, for example, it can be 5%, 10%, it depends on the impact that you want to generate. Mm -hmm. For example, I can do uh, a very small farm uh, from solar energy, and with this structure, I can only deliver 5%, for example, for a community. That could be done only one humanitarian DCH, or two, or five, or ten. It depends on the partners that are involved on the, on the specific project that we have. There is some projects that we have, the cities, nah, the mayors, they are participating with the project, delivering, for example, the area, uh, because we are delivering health care for them. So we are... Uh, uh, helping to reduce the struggle uh, uh, treatments that they have on, on, the, on the city. And uh, we, what we are delivering is the whole structure or the ESG uh, itself. Any more questions? There. Can you uh, uh, talk uh, a little bit how you're funding the infrastructure? <laughs> This is the last question. <laughs> okay. Uh, can you explain a little bit how you are funding the infrastructure itself? So obviously it costs something to 
deploy the, the network, uh, deploy all the components. So how is that being funded by the partners? Uh, there is some partners, for example, that they are having a lot of, a lot of uh, benefits with the system. For example, health insurance plans, they are uh, benefit with all the existing, so they pay. Now, for example, on a, on a structure or a node uh, by themselves. The cities pays by themselves, but there is some structure that we have funded from ourselves uh, in order to, to uh, have it bigger and to, to have a lot of structure. So it's combined and some, somebody uh, funds it and make, maybe it's a, a big effort to, to fund all of this stuff. Uh, we have enough, uh, not enough time. Uh, thank you very much. If everybody wants, hear my contacts. Uh, thank you for being here.